A look at the women in scripture, and you will see more than just some women who lived thousands of years ago. You will see yourself. As you study their stories and immerse yourself in their lives, you will see more places where our lives intersect with theirs. Women of the Bible, 52 Bible Studies for Individuals and Groups, presents 52 Women of Scripture. Beginning with a short description of the woman, then continuing with her story from Scripture and something about her life and times, each woman's story ends with a study asking the hard questions. How does her life mirror yours? What did she learn or experience that you as a God follower need to learn or experience? What event or relationship or crisis in her life reveals something about you? Even more than that, each study will help you discover how God is revealing himself to you through that woman's story. We encourage you as an individual or group not to pass over the hard questions or make you uncomfortable. The women of God's word have much to offer you but only if you face them openly and honestly. I hope and pray that Women of the Bible, 52 Bible Studies for Individuals and Groups will lead you as an individual or group into a more profound love of God's Word and its truth in your life. May the example set by these women so many years ago shine the light of God's presence on the pathway of your life today. Jean Sisworda, April 2002 Her name means chieftainess or princess. Her character Beautiful enough to attract rulers in the ancient world, she could be strong-willed and jealous. Yet Sarah was considered a loyal wife who did what was right and who didn't give in to fear. Key Scriptures Genesis 12 verses 1 through 20 16 1 through 8 17 verses 1 through 22 18 verses 1 through 15 21 verses 1 through 13, and Galatians 4 verses 22 through 31. Sarah's early life, Genesis 11 verses 27 to 32. Sarah was born as Sarai and raised in the U.R. of the Chaldees, which is located in modern-day Iraq. It was located on the Euphrates River, not far upstream from where the Euphrates and Tigris rivers join. Sarai was married to Abram, whom we know as Abraham. Abram was the oldest of three sons of a man named Terah. Abram had two other brothers, Nahor and Haran. However, his brother Haran died, leaving behind a son whom we know as Lot, and a daughter, Milcah, who became the wife of Abram's brother Nahor. After Haran's death, Terah took Abram and Sarai, along with Lot, and left Uar of the Chaldees. They traveled far upstream to the land of Haran, where they lived until Terah died. Abram, being the oldest of the sons, adopted Lot, his nephew, into his family and not long after, they left as God directed them to what would later become Israel. Article by Dr. Michael L. Williams Dr. Michael L. Williams is a pastor, author, Christian educator and biblical counselor who has served in ministry since 2001. Life and Times Names in Bible times, names had a significance they often do not have today. The names the mothers and fathers gave to their children gave us a glimpse into their personal experiences, sometimes reflecting their emotional responses to a situation. When Sarah was 90 years old, God told her that she and Abraham would finally have the child she had wished for so long. She could hardly believe it. After I am worn out, and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? She exclaimed in Genesis 18 verse 12. When her son was born. Sarah named him Isaac, which means he laughs, and she said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. Genesis 21 verse 6. Perhaps one of the Bible's most poignant scenes is played out when Rachel, in great pain and knowing she was dying, named her son Benoni, son of my trouble but Jacob, the child's father, loving this little one, even in his sorrow, renamed him Benjamin, son of my right hand, Genesis 35.16 through 20. When Hannah's son was born, she named him Samuel, which sounds like the Hebrew for heard of God, because God had heard her cries for a child. Many of the Old Testament prophets had names that spoke of their mission. Isaiah's name meant, the Lord saves. Obadiah's name meant, servant of the Lord. Nahum's name meant comfort, and Malachi's name meant my messenger. Our life and times. 
Throughout scripture God gives to his people names that offer a picture of their significance and worth to him. We are his treasured possessions. Exodus 19 verse 5 and Malachi 3 verse 17, the people of his inheritance, Deuteronomy 4 verse 20 and sons of the living God, Hosea 1 verse 10. We are his friends, John 15 verse 15. No matter what our given name is, God knows it. He calls us to him by our names in love, and we belong to him. Isaiah 43 verse 1. Sarah's personality profile. There probably is not anything more challenging to do than wait. Whether we are expecting something good, something bad, or an unknown. We often cope with a lower weight, or even a short one, to begin helping God get his plan into action. Sarah tried this approach. She was too old to expect to have a child of her own, so she thought God must have something else in mind. From Sarah's limited point of view, this could only give Abraham a son through another woman, a customary practice in her day. The plan seemed harmless enough. Abraham slept with Sarah's servant girl, giving birth to a child. Sarah would take the child as her own. The plan worked beautifully at first. But as you read about the events that followed, you will be struck by how often Sarah must have regretted the day she decided to push God's timetable ahead. We cope with a long wait to gradually conclude that what we are waiting for will never happen. Sarah waited 90 years for a baby when God told her she would finally have one of her own. She laughed not because of a lack of faith in what God could do, but from God about what he could do through her. When confronted about her laughter, she lied. As she had seen her husband do from time to time, she did not want her true feelings to be known. What parts of your life seem to be on hold right now? Do you understand that this may be part of God's plan for you? The Bible has more than enough clear direction to keep us busy while waiting for some part of our life to move ahead. Strengths and Accomplishments She was intensely loyal to her own child. Became the model of a nation and an ancestor of Jesus. Was a woman of faith the first woman listed in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11 verse 11? Weaknesses and Mistakes Having trouble believing God's promises to her. Attempted to work problems out on her own without consulting God. Tried to cover her faults by blaming others. Lessons from her life God responds to faith even during failure. God is not bound by what usually happens. He can stretch the limits and cause unheard of events to occur. Vital Statistics Where, married Abraham in you are of the Chaldeans, Chaldees, then moved with him to Canaan. Occupation, wife, mother, household manager. Relatives, father, Turah, husband, Abraham, brothers, Neher and Haran, nephew, Lot, and son, Isaac. Key verse, through faith, Sarah received the strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hebrews 11 verse 11. Sarah's story is told in Genesis 11, 25. She is also mentioned in Isaiah 51 verse 2, Romans 4 verse 19, 9 verse 9, Hebrews 11 verse 11, and 1 Peter 3 verse 6. Genesis 17 verses 15 to 16, New International Version. Verse 15, God also said to Abraham, As for Sarah your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai, her name will be Sarah. Verse 16, I will bless her, and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her, so that she will be the mother of nations, kings of peoples, will come from her. Genesis 18 verses 10 to 15, New International Version. Verse 10, Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah your wife will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Verse 11, Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Verse 12, So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Verse 13, Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child, now that I am old? Verse 14, Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. 
Verse 15, Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. Genesis 21 verses 1 to 7 New International Version The Birth of Isaac 21 Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Verse 2 Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Verse 3 Abraham gave the name Isaac, a, to the son Sarah bore him. Verse 4 When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him, as God commanded him. Verse 5 Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Verse 6 Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. Verse 7 And she added, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Genesis 16 verse 6 New International Version Verse 6 Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. Genesis 18 verse 12 Verse 12 So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Genesis 18 verse 15 Verse 15, Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. Genesis 21 verse 10 Verse 10, And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The story of Abraham Genesis 12 colon 1-25 colon 18 1. God promises a nation to Abraham. 2. Abraham and Lot. 3. God promises a son to Abraham. 4. Sodom and Gomorrah. 5. Birth and near sacrifice of Isaac. 6. Isaac marries Rebekah. 7. Abraham dies. Abraham was asked to leave his country, wander in Canaan, wait years for a son, and sacrifice him as a burnt offering. Through these periods of sharp testing, Abraham remained faithful to God. His example teaches us what it means to live a life of faith. Study 2 Sarai, Sarah study 3 Hagar, study 4 Lot's wife, 